Uh, hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bill Skelton, and I'm from the Gold Technology Group at Curtin University in Perth, Western Australia. And we're working with Gecko Systems to commercialize uh, a technology we developed called the Carbon Scout to measure carbon concentration uh, in CIL, carbon and leach circuits. Now, the reason we developed that technology was because of the extensive work we'd done uh, trying to improve the efficiency of carbon circuits. And of course, carbon circuits, their main function is to remove gold from solution and do that as efficiently as possible. And if we think about it, uh, and when we model those circuits, what we found is that typically the best arrangement for having carbon distributed down a circuit is for the carbon to be evenly distributed, the profile uh, concentration to be evenly distributed. So we have a look at this first graph here. This is the sort of profile we want. As we go down the circuit, we're looking for the carbon concentration to be even in every tank. Now, that's a nice plan, but the problem we have, partly, is that we control these circuits largely in a manual system. So what we usually find is carbon concentration not looking like that, but perhaps looking like this, when we go and take a measurement at any given time. That is, uh, at any given snapshot, the carbon will be distributed less than even uh, down the circuit. And what we find when that happens is that uh, we end up with a higher solution loss of gold, i.e. a lower gold recovery, uh, than we would expect. So the problem there is that, and what we see at the, on the other hand with the solution loss is where we would like to have a nice even solution loss, showing the circuit is operating in steady state, what we get are uh, numbers that look like this. That is, you have a variation that may or may not be the average you're seeking, but you have some good days, very good days, and some very bad days. And those obviously show the circuit is not operating in a perfect form. So how do we improve our management of that circuit? And what we realized was while we understood theoretically how to do that, we had a problem with the mechanics of doing it. And in particular, the fact that the carbon concentration is measured manually and not very frequently, and that the carbon is often moved manually, that is the pumps are turned on and turned off in a manual fashion. So we needed something to automate that process, and so we developed the carbon scout. Here is a, a very simple diagram of the instrument we developed. And what it's actually doing is mimicking what people actually do, or the operators do, manually. That is, take a sample of the carbon, measure its volume, and convert that to a grams per liter figure. So in our case, we have this instrument that's at the ground level, uh, not up on the tanks, but at the ground level. And we have a sample cone of about 20 liters, which is a much bigger sample that's taken manually. And we fill that cone from a given tank simply by siphoning the sample through a plastic pipe from the tank surface. So no pumps are involved in this process. We fill the cone, it's got a level indicator, and when the level indicator indicates that it's got the sample collected, obviously the sample is collected, and the first thing we do is in fact, before we even measure carbon, we measure dissolved oxygen and pH in that solution. So all, not only are we measuring carbon now, we're measuring DO, dissolved oxygen, and pH right down the circuit. We collect that sample, we then open a valve here, and the sample flows through a strainer or a sieve, and the pulp is removed uh, with washing, and at the bottom, the carbon is left as a, as a, a column of carbon uh, 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 remaining at the bottom of the tank, uh, at, the, at the bottom of the strainer. We then use a laser up here to measure the height of that carbon column, and from that height we get a volume, and from that volume we get a carbon concentration. Small valve opens here, and then the, that sample is washed out, and we move on to the next uh, the next tank in the series. So by doing that, we measure a much bigger volume, that is, we get a more accurate measurement, and we measure much, much more frequently than the manual operation, uh, because the operator doesn't have time to do frequent measurements. We can now connect that measurement to a control system, which will automatically run the carbon transfer pumps, so the whole system is now automated, ensuring that we have a much more even distribution. In the future, we, we will be able to add other options to this instrument. For example, we could put load cells in here and measure the weight of that pulp, which will give us the pulp density. And a little bit further again into the future, we have the possibility of using XRF to measure the gold concentration on the carbon directly. So we now have dynamic 
uh, measurements of the circuit, allowing us for much better dynamic control and allowing us to operate our circuit much closer to steady state, which allows us to refine the uh, accuracy and precision of the circuit much better. We've installed this in a number of circuits during the development phase and now into the production phase, and we've seen notable reduction in solution losses. Uh, the, the, the sites also say that in their view, the instrument basically pays for itself via safety, improved safety in terms of their operators not having to do certain uh, actions, and also releasing them for more critically important uh, functions, non-routine functions, uh, instead of wasting an hour or two a day measuring the carbon concentration. So all in all, it's about the future, and it's about measuring and managing our circuit more accurately and releasing our precious operating time, operational time, for the operators to do more uh, critical, non-standard um, uh, functions. Thank you very much.